Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these particular topics. So what we're going to be looking at here today is that we're going to be looking at components and resultants and we're going to be solving a components and resultants problem using the parallelogram law. So we are going to uh, work on this problem as shown here on the screen where we have this hook and we have 900 newtons of force and then 600 newtons of force being applied to it as, or in the orientation of the angle shown. And we need to find out the resultant that is acting from these two forces. And there's multiple different methods that you can use to solve this. In this particular video, as stated, we will be using the parallelogram law, which you may also hear or refer to as the parallelogram rule. It's the same thing. So whenever using this uh, parallelogram law, first thing you wanna do, is you want to draw a free body diagram, and then you're going to draw your parallelogram on top of that free body diagram. So first things first, I'm going to draw an X and Y coordinate system. And then the origin of my coordinate system is going to be the center where these two forces act. So I'm going to draw my 900 and my 600 Newtons of force on my free body diagram here, acting at that origin point. So there's my 900, and there's my 600 Newtons of force. We do know that the 900 is at 30 degrees off the X, and then there is 45 degrees between the 900 and the 600 as shown in the original picture. So we really don't need that, new, that original picture anymore. We can use our free body, free body diagram here. And this is when we're going to start utilizing the parallelogram law. So we have to draw a parallelogram out of these two forces. So how do we do that? Well, first step is that you're going to take each force, you're gonna copy it, and you're gonna paste it at the end of the other force. So for example, here, let's draw a parallelogram. We are going to copy this 900 Newtons of force, and we are going to paste it at the end of the 600. And then we are going to repeat that process for the 600. We are going to take it, copy it, and then we're going to paste it at the end of the 900 Newtons of force. Now, if you're a really good drawler, this should form a perfect parallelogram. If you're not a perfect drawler, just like me, you can see it's, it's a four-sided shape, not exactly a parallelogram, but we're going to assume and visualize and imagine that it's a parallelogram. So with this internal angle right here being 45 degrees between the 600 and the 900, this opposite side here is also going to be 45 degrees. And then my resultant is going to be from corner to corner. So it's going to be from this corner to the opposite corner Basically, it's where the 600 and the 900 combined, and then where the copied and paste versions combined. And that's going to be the location and the direction of my resultant force between these two. So how do we solve for that resultant force? Well, in order to solve for this resultant force, we have to know what these opposite angles are here. Well, we're just gonna label them little c for right now. And in order to solve for those, we have to know and understand that there's a total of 360 degrees in this parallelogram. In all four-sided shapes, there's 360 degrees. We know that this is 45 and this angle is 45. And since it's a parallelogram, these two sides are equal in value as well. So one of those c angles is going to be the total of 360 degrees, minus off the two 45 degree angles, and then divided by two. So each of those angles pops out to be 135 degrees. So with that angle known, I can utilize one of the two triangles that is formed inside this parallelogram. You have this top version, with the 600, 900, and the resultant, and then this bottom version with the 900, 600, and the resultant. It does not matter which one you utilize. 
They both should give you the same answer in the end if you've done it correctly. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on this bottom one right here. So drawing out this bottom one, what I have is I have my 900, I have my 600, and then I have my resultant as my third side here. I have this internal angle right here of 135 degrees, oh, degrees. Don't know what this angle is up here. And this angle down here, I'm just gonna call theta because eventually I'm going to need theta because I need to locate at what angle this resultant is. And theta is right here. So whatever theta is, to get the location of the resultant, I just need to add it to the 30 degrees off of the x. So looking at my triangle here on the right side, what I have is I have two sides that are known in magnitude, and I have the angle known that is opposite my unknown side. Whenever that happens, you want to use the law of cosines to solve for that opposite unknown side, which just happens to be our resultant value. So utilizing this law of cosines, let's plug in the equation here. And it's going to be my resultant squared is equal to one of my sides that is known squared, so 900 squared plus the other side known, which is 600 squared, minus two times one of the sides times the other side times the cosine of that angle that is opposite the resultant, which is cosine of 135 degrees. So removing the square from both sides, so I would have to square root this entire side Removing the square over here. So when calculating out this resultant, and that's one of the major um, things that is missed when doing these types of problems, that a lot of people forget to take the square root. Make sure you take the square root. This resultant value comes out to be 1390.6 newtons in that general upright direction. So we just found the resultant magnitude. Now we have to find out where is it? So we need to find that theta angle. So in order to find that theta angle, if we look at our triangle now with this side known, we know all sides. We know one of the angles internal, but we need to determine the other angle. So anytime that you know two sides, one interior, or you know all three sides, one angle, and you need to find the other angle, you're going to use the law of sines for that. So utilizing the law of sines, what I have is my resultant side, which is 1390.6 over the sine of the angle that is opposite, which is the 135 degrees. And that's going to be equal to the side that is opposite the angle I'm looking for. So the 600 up here is opposite the theta angle. So it's going to be 600 newtons divided by the sine of theta. So solving for theta, just rearranging cross multiplying here, theta is going to be equal to the sine inverse of 600 sine of 135 degrees divided by the 1390.6 for the resultant. And this gives me a total of 17 Point seven six degrees. Keep in mind that 17.76 degrees is not the total angle off of the X. That is the angle off of the 900. To get the total angle off of the X, we just have to add in 30 degrees here. So my total angle will be adding in 30 degrees. So I end up with 47 0.76 degrees. So in the end here, I have this situation once we find the resultant. It is 1390.6 newtons at a total angle of 47.76 degrees 
off of the x-axis. And that is my final solution for this problem. As I said, it does not matter if you use the top triangle or the bottom triangle when you're looking at your parallelogram. But overall, these are the steps and procedures that you would use. First, draw your parallelogram. Second, determine the angle that is opposite your resultant value. Then utilize one of the triangles. Use the law of cosines to find your resultant. And then use the law of sines to find your angles internally. And then use that angle to finally find the final angle off of the x-axis. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved or this variety, please check out the other or the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.